Hi everyone, hope you're well. And this is another video about the building a paraglider series. On this one, it's a bit of a sidestep because I would like to go from paper to cloth. And to do that, instead of just trying to do a paraglider because they're quite complex and they have lots of parts, I thought I'd try to do a parachute. Now for a parachute, they kind of like basically could be half a ball, half a sphere. Um, and I think, you know, because of how balls are made and parachutes are made, they're basically panels that are triangles that come to a point. So I thought I'd start by making a load of triangles. And if you make a load of these and you put them together, you end up with something like this. And then the thing that came to mind was obviously there's the number of cells that you choose and then there's the perimeter and the height. And even though these are all straight edges and we might be working with rounds, I wanted to know how all of these things might be related to each other. So I've done some tests and I drew a few things and then did a bit of trigonometry and some equations and stuff and I arrived at this, which basically says that th these triangles can have an A measurement and a B measurement and we can define everything based on those two. So the things I'm interested in are the radius or diameter of the circle that encompasses this shape and also the height. And if it's half a sphere, that height should be the same as the radius, or at least that was my thinking. So using those equations for A and B, what I could do is another prototype. And in this one, what I did is I defined what radius I wanted, how many sides is n, and what height, the height I wanted to be the same as the radius, and that spits out A and B. So A is here, and B is here. So with that, I got this guy, which kind of worked because the radius of the circle that it encompasses is roughly the same as the height. So this looked pretty promising. So since my math worked for that one, I decided to do a similar one, but kind of in the shape that I'd like to actually make my cloth parachute. So I did the same thing. I specified the measurements that I wanted, and then I drew my triangle, and then I added a radius, the biggest radius I had, to this sheet. And this is supposed to have six sides. However, when I've put it together, it kind of prefer to be five-sided because if I try to make the six sides it's just it just it just wouldn't work it just didn't want to go there and I think that's because this radius is still not big enough it should be closer to the line so just like last time I took a leap of faith even though I don't understand the maths behind that bit yet and went to the computer and made an even bigger version with a much bigger radius closer to the line and I've also added a bit of radius on the bottom so that when it's all together in a circle the circle can be instead of pentagon or hexagon it will be an actual circle then I added some seam allowance to it and let's do a build montage
guy. <laughs> to my guy. Right. right. It's all done. Gemma did all the lines and she even made this little guy Steven <laughs> to be our uh, to be our little test pilot. Steven's got a lot of junk in his trunk. Have you seen this bum that I had to reinforce because his head was so heavy? <laughs> I thought it was because he was gonna land really hard on his bum. <laughs> that too, obviously, and ballast. This uh, this turned out okay, didn't it? Like a little bit rough around the edges, but not bad. Um, it would have been nicer if we could have got like proper parachute material, but the it's kind of almost like a silky cloth, isn't it? So it's the closest we could get. Yeah, yeah. This was the lightest, thinnest cloth we could find, and still is too thick. A little bit. Com compared to an umbrella, like it's still really thick. It's really windy outside, but let's just go test it. Let's do it. Yeah, go on, just do it. Well, Stephen's a bit dirtier than when we first started. Yeah, he got rolled around a lot. It was really <laughs> strong wind. Uh, but parachute still did its job, it just drifted a lot. Yeah. And then we went out to the front near the beach and it was really, really strong there. So, uh, seems to be holding up. That was an interesting uh, little experiment, wasn't it? Yeah. I feel like I kind of get the math around the straight edges and how to work out all that stuff. I don't really know how it works when it starts to have curved edges like this. I kind of have like an intuitive way to, to go about it, but it's not exact and precise. So maybe CAD... Can you kind of be... use the math from the these ones and then just add curves to it? So... Yes, but how I added the curves didn't really add up. Like Remember this one is supposed to be six, but six doesn't work because the yeah. curve has added too much material. Yeah, yeah. So I think for this, I would use the computer to actually model it in 3D and then work out what the shapes were. Mm -hmm. It doesn't quite work the same as last episode, in case you missed it. So the question is, what do you want to do next in the series? I really want to do a little paraglider, like a little one. The problem is with the paraglider is all the bits are different and it's quite mm. complex, but maybe you just need to design it in CAD or something. Yeah, this. I think we probably need to use the computer. But that's for next time. We'll see. Maybe we'll do something completely different. Yeah. For now, I want to thank you all for, for watching. Thank you. A special thank you to all these people on Patreon for supporting us thank and you. supporting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, Stephen fell over. They he drunk. They, they carry.